Your task is to use the definition of a minimally competent student to provide Angoff ratings. This task will take approximately one to two hours to complete. Let's go over how this works. This worksheet is what you will be using to perform the Angoff rating for each of the questions on the WBE post-test. This table shows the case number, the question number, the text of the question, and has a spot for you to enter your Angoff response into. Basically what you will be doing is you will look at each question on the assessment, answer it as if you are a student, check your answer, and then give your Angoff response. The instructions are here at the top of this worksheet. I would suggest that you start this process by launching the post-test using the link provided to you and proceeding until you see the first actual question. Review that question, answer it as if you are a student, check your answer, then go to the worksheet to enter your Angoff rating. Go back to the post-test and move to the next question and repeat this process. Keep progressing in this manner. You will definitely want to have the actual post-test open as you go through the worksheet so that you can see the full questions being asked. The worksheet includes most of the question text, but that does not always help, especially if you cannot also see the companion media files, scenario, and answer options. Let's walk through in more detail how this works. When you click on the link to the post-test, you will come to this sign-in page. Sign in with the username and password provided to you in the email. Once signed in, you will see the WBE post-test listed in your portal. Click Start to see this post-test. This will bring you to a page showing you the layout of the post-test. In this instance, there are four sections, three pertaining to different cases and one containing some general questions. Click on Case 1. The post-test will start with a copyright statement, as shown here. Clicking on the arrow at the bottom right-hand side of the screen will take you to the next page or question. The number at the top left, here by my mouse cursor, is the question number. This will match the question number in the Angoff worksheet for that case. As you can see here, question two is not an actual question. That is, there is nothing here for the student to answer. This question is the scenario for this case. There will be questions similar to this throughout the post-test. These types of questions do not require an Angoff response from you. They will be highlighted in the Angoff worksheet in gray, and their Angoff cell will be black. Please do not enter anything into these blacked out cells. Clicking on the next arrow again will bring you to the first real question, question number three. In the Angoff worksheet, you will see the question text as it's presented to the students. But as you can see, the entire question may not be viewable within the worksheet. The text of the worksheet is there to help you line up the worksheet with the post-test. You will want to look at each question in the post-test within the context of the scenario and answer it as if you are a student taking the post-test. After you have answered this question, click Solution at the bottom left-hand side to see what the correct answer is. You can always return to the scenario by clicking the back arrow. Note, though, that the back arrow will not let you see previous questions, just a scenario. Selecting the forward arrow again after reviewing the scenario will take you back to the question you were on. Returning to the worksheet, the next column shows yes, no, followed by the question, will a minimally competent student answer this question correctly? To provide your Angoff rating, you'll select yes or no from the dropdown. Now let's look at question number four. As you can see, this post-test question text inside the worksheet does not help much. Let's look at it in the post-test itself. You will again want to answer the question as if you are taking the post-test as a student, then click Solution to see the correct answer. We can return to the worksheet. If we click on the cell for the Angoff response for this question, you'll see the question, how many of these will a minimally competent student answer correctly? Clicking on the drop-down shows seven possible options, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. This is because this question has six sub-questions and that the student can get 0 through 6 of these sub-questions correct. Thus, the quite real question is, how many of these six sub-questions will a minimally competent student answer correctly? If you think a minimally competent student will answer, say, only two of the six correctly, you would select two. You will keep progressing in this manner until you have given Angoff responses to every question on the post-test. Please enter your responses into this spreadsheet by selecting them from the drop-downs as shown. Do not print this worksheet and write in the responses. 
When you've completed your rating, save the file by adding your name to it and email the spreadsheet to us at poc at ardms.org. The master spreadsheet will have data from 67 questions across all judges. Individual judge ratings will be combined and aggregate data will be presented. This table provides an example of the results of a post-test with only four questions and eight judges. As you can tell, looking at question number one of the table, the Angoff question is a yes-no type question. Six of the eight judges felt that a minimally competent student will answer this question on the post-test correctly, while two of the judges felt otherwise. Now look at question number two. This is not a yes-no type question. There are three sub-questions. The Angoff question asked of the judges was, how many of the three sub-questions will a minimally competent student answer correctly? The answer ranges from zero to three. As you can tell, Judge number one felt that a minimally competent student will answer two of the three sub-questions correctly, while judge three felt that a minimally competent student will answer all three sub-questions correctly. All post-Angoff data analyses will be performed by ARDMS psychometricians. The final spreadsheet will have data for all 67 questions from all of the judges, similar to the table from the previous slide. Your individual ratings will then be combined and analyzed. The average question difficulty based on real students' performance and the judge's average Angoff rating will be compared and presented in this final spreadsheet, as well as inner judge reliability indices. These inner judge reliability indices measure how consistently each judge's ratings are with each of the other judges so that we can evaluate the standard setting process. Once the ARDMS psychometric team has completed its analyses, we will share the proposed passing standard resulting from the Angoff ratings with all of you. All of you, together as the standard setting panel, will discuss this proposed passing standard and evaluate the impact of the proposed passing standard in terms of pass rates. Finally, you will reach a consensus on the passing standard. The proposed passing standard will be presented to both ARDMS and WinFocus for acceptance. Once approved, the WBE post-test from the course in Hong Kong will be scored based on your approved passing standard and certificates will be awarded to the WBE students who achieved this passing standard on the post-test and completed all other program requirements. Thank you for your willingness to participate in the standard setting. Your participation will help to improve overall community health care worldwide. If you have questions about the WinFocus Basic Echo Ultrasound course, please contact us at elizabeth.langston at ardms.org or poc at ardms.org.